What's going on doll fans? It is your boy Dylan and uh, I just I wanted to make a quick video uh, relatively quick video anyway um, to update you I haven't um, been doing a whole lot of updates on the current situation of uh, you know the outbreaks within the NFL of COVID uh, I mean look obviously it's getting worse and worse in the entire country let alone the NFL but there is don't mistake there is pretty serious uh, outbreak throughout the NFL going on and that only continues to get worse. Um, it would seem that the majority of the issues though, they are still having some positives, but the majority of the issues are guys who um, end up on the, the list, uh, you know, because of contact tracing. Um, I do have something to say about that, uh, but let's get through this article real quick and get to the details. It's not really Dolphins related, but it is uh, related to an opponent we have a little bit later down the season, and that is the Raiders. And they have already had issues with, uh, you know, COVID issues um, earlier on in the season, and in fact had pretty harsh penalties imposed on them, including uh, the forfeiture of a sixth round pick from next year. Uh, and so now they're having problems again because, you know, as I said, there's no way, as I've said a million times now, there's no way that they can control any of this um they just don't care and that's why they're pushing on of course but they can't control any of it none of the you know guidelines or measures that they have in place are adequate to begin with and their solution is, is to just continue to get stricter and stricter you know make mandates and and have the penalties be harsher and harsher but that's not going to solve the problem right um anyway but so Let's see. Jonathan Abram and Malik Collins among seven Raiders players placed on COVID-19 list. The Las Vegas Raiders placed seven defensive players on the reserve COVID-19 list on Wednesday. Uh, safety Jonathan Abram, defensive tackle Malik Collins, defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins, defensive line David Irving, cornerback Isaiah Johnson, defensive end Arden Key, and defensive tackle Kendall uh, Vickers. Um, now, let's see. So they were all placed on the list Wednesday. Right now, according to the rules, right, the regulations, they're supposed to be out for five days, right? And the, the, the rules have only gotten stricter. In fact, the NFL just put out some recent um, updates that are supposedly more stricter, etc. even though, again, they can't control any of it, blah, 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 whatever. But um, so five days, right? So they're placed there on Wednesday. Let's do a count. Uh, Thursday, Friday. I mean, even if you count, okay, so let's even, let's say you count Wednesday, the day that they got put on, although you should count after the fact, but let's say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even with that count, they should still then be out Sunday, all of these players, which obviously would be problematic for the Raiders going against their upcoming opponent, which happens to be the Chiefs. Uh, according to NFL Network's Ian Rappaport and Tom Belicero, those players may be eligible to suit up when the team hosts the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday night if they continue to test negative for the virus. So according to the rules, they're supposed to be out for five days and also have, um, you know, negative tests. Okay, but as we saw this past week, Kyle Van Noy was activated even though he, him and Christian Wilkins were put on, on the list Thursday, and uh, that's obviously not five days, but so, you know, they don't care. As long as there's negative tests, they're going to fucking activate guys, whatever, no big deal. But also, it's curious because, so, and this will play to the point of how they can't control it to begin with. So... If all of these guys, because the vast majority of them, I, I mean, um, especially recently in the past few weeks, the vast majority of COVID issues have been guys being placed on the COVID list because they were in contact with somebody who was COVID, uh, COVID positive. But let me think about that. So if none of these guys, especially, like in this case, with the, the, the seven, uh, I think they have like 10 people all together. Um, so probably some staff as well that are, you know, whatever on the list and have to stay home and quarantine, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if none of these guys actually tested positive, well, then who is it that they're coming into contact with? Because it shouldn't be anybody else within the building, 
right? Because all those people are tested and none of them have tested positive. And the only people that, you know, are in the protocol are people on the list because they came into contact with someone. So did they come into contact with somebody outside the building? Family members or friends, right? Like you can't control it. They're not gonna, anyway. So it's giant fucking shit show, of course. Uh, but let's continue on. Per ESPN's Paul Gutierrez, the Raiders move starting defensive end Cleland Farrell and cornerback Lamarcus Joyner to the reserve COVID-19 list on Tuesday. The pair joined starting linebacker Corey Littleton, who was moved to the list last Thursday and did not play in Sunday's defeat of the Denver Broncos. Per to Sean Reed uh, the, of The Athletic, the Raiders defense now have six starters and four backups on the reserve COVID-19 list. Las Vegas, and then they go in to, you know, talk about their fucking forfeitures. Gruden was fined 100 k The franchise was fined $250,000. Um, and, you know, Gruden, well, first of all, Gruden makes millions of dollars. So $100,000 probably isn't really a big deal to him. Although the fines that they, you know, impose on them and the players and this other staff members is ridiculous. Uh, the franchise, 250 grand. Um, the franchise, w with the amount of money that they're making because the season's actually continuing, pales into comparison to that 250. So, frankly, as far as I'm concerned, I bet you anything, they don't give a shit about that. They're happy to to, to pay it, um, and just deal with it. They know that they can't, you know, fully enforce it. They know that, you know, there are going to be times where they have to pull their mask down or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so they're just like, you know, whatever, we're going to fucking eat it because this is at least coming from, you know, the franchise because they know they're going to make so much more money actually having the games continue, right? And frankly, that's all the NFL cares about and that's all the owners care about is their money, right? And for the NFL in particular, this is just a way that they get to recoup some of their losses on the year, right? So, you know, they're forcing people to fucking continue playing the game and to continue working and so on and so forth during this pandemic when things are getting, like, absurdly out of control, right? And so, um, but if they didn't, right, if they cut the season, they could potentially lose out on $16 billion. So to, to, to offset that, so offset that they're forcing people to play and to, to work during this, but then also they're just going to start fucking taking, you know, the lower level people's money. Now, again, John Gruden makes millions of dollars, a hundred K is probably not that big a deal, but I mean, it's just absurd and it doesn't fix shit. It's only fucking performative to make it seem like the NFL is actually doing something and actually gives a fuck and cares but it's all just a show. It's totally just show because again, how many times now, this is like the fourth or fifth time that they've increased their fucking, you know, uh, protocols and shit. Yeah. Well, how's that worked out? It hasn't. It hasn't. In fact, it's getting worse. Anyway, like I said, just a fucking joke. It's so, I mean, like I said, I haven't really been because there have been there's been a lot. I mean, like half the fucking league is dealing with uh, COVID issues right now, including the Dolphins, right? So like, it's a big deal. And again, you know, but part of the reason why I haven't is because, you know, I I, I don't want to like make a video every day harping on it. It is exceptionally important, but you know, I do say it enough. So there's that. And also when you get like, you know, just these little stories of one-offs and stuff every case is important of course because it could be life-threatening but um you know I, I i try and just lump it in together i mean also look you know i just saw another uh um uh alert earlier that you know fucking a couple golfers from the the i don't know if it was the, i can't remember if it was the masters or, or or no the masters just finished whatever anyway PGA maybe whatever the fuck is going on right now in golf a cup three dudes are having to pull out because they tested positive right a bunch of you know college games have gotten canceled like it's just a fucking disaster absolute fucking disaster and it, it's not going to get any better and you know it's all because of the greed now look you know I've said for a while that I, I mean I can't for me, I can't see any logical way that the season continues on, right? Like it just, it just, but that's, that's me coming from the perspective of like, you know, caring about people's lives and shit. And so when you, when you understand that the NFL and the owners just don't, and literally the only thing that they give a shit about is their money, 
then they're gonna push the season no matter what right so like and i've said this for a while too it's only a matter of time before somebody you know closely linked to the nfl whether it's a coach or a player or whatever dies from it because you can only play with fire but so much and you know get away unscathed unburned right um and with every new positive test uh, it just increases the probability and the likelihood, not to mention with the way that, um, you know, this thing is going in the country altogether. It's just an absolute fucking disaster. It's never been as bad as it is right now, but you still then have put people who deny it and fucking don't wear masks, etc. They're still trying to increase fucking stadium capacities, right? Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida forever ago now, it seems lifted all COVID restrictions. I mean, it's just, it's... It's a giant fucking mess, like I said. So I it, I find it personally difficult to believe that the season can even go throughout in its entirety. But I do know and understand that they are going to push it um, no matter fucking what. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess that's where I can end it because, I, I you know, I don't know what to say after that. Like... It, it's it's literally going to, going to go on. It's going to keep getting worse. And again, though, it's not even... And I guess this will be the last thing I say on it um, for this video and, and for now, right? Is is that, again, it's not even just while you have the virus, right? It's long-term effects, right? I just saw a... Uh, or I just retweeted, uh, you know, somebody, somebody tweeted out and I retweeted them. And it said something along the lines of, I'm paraphrasing... Um, the person's sister-in-law, or no, no, not sister-in-law, stepsister, excuse me, their, you know, late 30s, 39, just had a kid like two months ago, or, or in the past few months, rather, just had COVID two months ago, recovered, thought they were fully recovered, and died. She woke up one day, fucking hard, hard to breathe, went to the hospital, died on the way because it it ravages the body like the shit's no fucking joke i can't tell you how many fucking you know stories and tweets i've seen of people being like you know i did everything right i followed all the rules and the guidelines and uh fuck man you know so much for that i got it in fact i just saw one earlier today about some dude that was like man i did everything right and now me and my family me my wife my daughter and my stepdaughter have all tested positive and all of those people's lives are potentially over right because they could all die super young those kids it, kids are not immune kids are not immune at all plenty of kids have died they certainly get sick and they certainly fucking spread it right uh just because you're young you're it's you're not immune right and in fact i mean like it's all right that's where i'm gonna end it you guys get the point i've said it a million times um and unfortunately this is just the world that we live in so this is actually how I'll end it. I, look, I hope everybody fucking takes this shit seriously and keeps themselves protected. Stay the fuck home. Only go out when you absolutely fucking have to, right? Like to get groceries and shit. Obviously, if you're an essential worker, you got to do what you got to do and, um, you know, take extra precautions. Absolutely wear masks. Make sure you're fucking cleaning shit a lot. You know, hand sanitizer. Definitely, even if you're not going out, right? Um, or even if you're not an essential worker, make sure you're washing your hands. Like me, anytime I order shit, I order a lot of shit, right? Even a lot of groceries. I, I sanitize all of it just to be fucking safe, right? Because again, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people be like, man, I did everything right and still got it. So, you know, the crazier it gets, the, the way that you survive and the way that you stop from getting it is to make sure that you continue to heighten your precautions. Don't fucking, don't, you know, don't get complacent, don't get comfortable and don't think everything's all fucking hunky dory and you're just going to be able to start, you know, uh, scaling back. No, you got to continue to be di diligent and persevere or persevere through all the bullshit and the propaganda, you know, that says everything's all fucking good and acknowledge and understand that it's not it's not all good and you got to stay safe so all right with that i'm gonna get out of here i hope you guys appreciate my perspectives if you do make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the like button make sure that hit the bell if you want to uh get the alerts share my channel and videos with your friends and family leave your questions comments and concerns down in the comment section of course as always follow me on twitter at dylan tartaro with that i am out see y'all soon fins up